Welcome to my presentation on how to use Google Meets for Teachers at MS86 Bon Eagle School District in Maine. This screencast was recorded on September 3rd, 2020, and things may have changed since it was recorded, so be sure to check in with your tech coach in order to see what new features may have been released. The goal for this deck is to learn how to securely use Google Meets as a student and a teacher in our district. Hey everyone, a key part of this tutorial is that I'm going to be using two different accounts to walk you through this process of using Google Meets. One is my own account and one is a demo student account. If you try to do this process side by side with another teacher, it simply won't work. So if you're testing it that way, keep in mind you're going to have a different experience than if your students are doing the same thing. So as you go through this video, I'll have a teacher account on the left and a student account on the right. Um, so just keep that in mind. For consistency's sake, there are two things that you need to keep in mind with Google Meets and using it securely. First is that you provide the students with a nickname. Do not give them the link to your Meet. And in order to join the Google Meet, you will direct them to meet.google.com in order to enter their nickname into the field provided. Now let's go over the process. Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use Google Meet securely with students. For the purposes of this demo, I am using my own personal teacher account as well as a demo student account. On the left, you can see the teacher account, and on the right, you can see the student account. From the very beginning, we can tell that there's a little bit of a difference between these two screens because on the left, when we go to meet.google.com, which is where we are going to direct all of our students to join our meets from, as well as where we as teachers are going to create our meets, we see that it says plus join or start a meeting. However, on the right side, we see use a meeting code. That would be because students cannot create Google Meets accounts or events on their own whereas teachers can make them on their own accounts. So there's a slight difference right off the bat between the two. On the left-hand side, I'm going to say join or start a meeting because I want to meet with my group of students during our remote learning days. I will call it Coaches Demo, which is a demo account or a meeting that I have made already prior to today, and I can click Continue. Now, in order to have my students join my Google Meet, once I get into it, I'm going to provide them with the nickname that I already put into the page or the meeting code. So on here, for the sake of argument as a teacher, I'm going to mute and turn off my camera in order to prevent or reduce the glitching using two accounts on the same window. But on the right side, as the student, class is about to start, I need to make sure that I can get in. So I'll use a meeting code. And once I click use a meeting code on the student side, I need to remember what that code is. So it's coaches demo, and I'm going to click continue. It will prompt me to complete the same process on the right hand side. And once the student gets in, then you'll be able to see that that's the same sort of Google Meet experience that you've already used. So as you see on the left hand side on the teacher screen, it gives me my meeting nickname that I can only use within the MSAD6 realm, as well as the join info that I wanted to share. However, I'm using this meeting with students. I do not want to share the meeting code or the, the link or the dial in or the pin number with them. All I want to share is this meeting nickname, and this is the key part here. They're not joining through a link, they're joining through a meeting nickname. So on the student side, I'm going to turn off my camera and my microphone in order to join this meeting. And on the teacher side, I'll close this pop-up. 
And normally, I'll be honest, it's not usually this slow as you go through this process. However, I'm obviously running two windows side by side. So now I can click join as the student. I can see that my teacher is already in the call. And I would be able to see any other students that are in the call as well. And so now I can click join now. So at this point, the teacher can proceed with having class. All the students are present. We're ready to go. Okay, so pretty easy process. Keep in mind, use the nickname and use meet.google.com in order to join. going to move into a little bit more of the control features of Google Meet at this point and more features will be added but the two common things that teachers often want to know is first off how do I remove a student they are not supposed to be in my class and yet someone shared the meet code with them a nickname and I need to remove them so as a reminder from our previous video on the left hand side is my teacher account and on the right side is my student account the myself visible on the left is the screen of the student and the, the picture on the right hand side would be the still of the teacher so I'm going to open up the participants panel in Google meet on the left hand side in the teachers device now that I have done so my demo student that I have here I want them to leave the meeting. I would click this minus button to remove them. If I want to mute the student, then I could use this button here. Now, as we look at this, it is a grayed out cross through. That is because a student has to be the one to unmute themselves. Teachers cannot do that for them. And the reason being is that it's a privacy concern. If we were to unmute a student without their knowledge, then we might be privy to some conversations that we're not allowed to hear. So as a test, as a student, I'm going to unmute myself in the class. Now I'm going to get some lovely feedback. <laughs> but on the side, if I decide that this student needs to be muted, Then I can press the microphone button. And before I do so, you can see that they're the ones that are speaking because of the green dots by their image. It's a great way of figuring out where background noise is coming from when you're hosting a class. So I'm going to meet the student. And when I do so, I get a pop-up that asks me if I want to mute that student for everyone in the call. And as it says, they are the only ones that can unmute themselves. So I just muted the student. They would have noticed. Um, if they were paying attention to their buttons at the bottom, notice that they were muted. Um, they might also hear a bing in their ears like I did that tells them that something had changed with their microphone. Again, I can still unmute myself. Uh, there's no way to prevent a student from unmuting themselves. However, you do have control of muting them within the teacher panel. Now let's look at removing a student and I will say I didn't do this until now because if I removed my test student prior to now then they actually can't get back in so that would have made it really hard to demo that sound feature that I just talked about. So from here I'm going to remove a test high school because it's a nuisance student account who should not be in my meeting. So I will click remove. And once I do so, the
the student or as a teacher I get the notification or get the reminder if you remove the student from the call they will not be able to join this meeting again so I'll say remove and then on the student side they will see that they have been removed from this meeting now if I wanted to rejoin that meeting I can go back in to meet.google.com and then I could try to use the same meeting code and click continue. However, as you can see, I'm the Newson student and I can't join that call anymore. So if you do have a student that joins your class that should not because they got the nickname from another student, then remove the student and they won't be able to join that call again. So I hope this makes sense, how to use Google Meets as of September 3rd, 2020. As I said during my first video, a lot of new features are coming out, so these two moderation controls that you just saw may not be the only options available to you when you're watching this video, but I sure do hope it helps.